Hey, thanks for joining me. What we've got here is a, a really old clock. Uh, it's been in my family for as long as we can remember, and uh, we've never seen it running before. So I'm hoping I can get into it and see what's going on with it and see if I can get it running. My first challenge was trying to figure out what kind of clock this is and what model and who made it and things like that. The label on the back had a little bit of information on it and was able to figure out that it's a Gilbert clock made in Connecticut, I think around 1885. So now we can get into the fun stuff. So we got to get the, the hands off and the dial off. Um, this wasn't too bad. It is missing a screw. So um, that's something I'll have to address towards the end when I start putting it back together. One thing that I noticed once I took the dial off is there's writing on the back. And um, you know, it's hard to read, but it says cleaned and repaired November 11th, 1891 and cleaned again in 1896. So that's really cool they put that on the back there. And uh, so now I can get in here and get the movement out. Um, another thing I noticed is there's only two screws holding the movement in. So uh, once I put the movement back in, I'll have to um, secure that with four screws. It's also missing the uh, suspension spring. So I'll have to try to find another one of those, uh, probably on eBay. So I'm just taking the first looks at it now and seeing if there's anything that's that's broken or anything else that's missing. Um, just trying to figure out how this thing works and and uh, I'll start taking it apart and get to cleaning. So before I completely disassemble this whole movement, I like to uh, secure both springs with zip ties, and uh, this prevents the springs from completely unwinding. Uh, when the movement's taken apart. So this is only the second clock I've worked on, and so I'm just figuring things out as I go. Um, I don't really know exactly what I'm doing. So uh, as you can see here, I'm trying to take off this top plate, but there's these two gears called the stop works, and it's kind of preventing the top plate from releasing. And so once I get those popped off, um, the top plate just comes right off. Once that's off, you're just left with just a pile of parts and gears, and uh, it's, a, it's a mess. It looks really complicated. Uh, I like to look at each part and see if there's any damage or anything that's noticeably wrong, and then um, I can start getting things ready to be cleaned.
So you can see here how uh, putting these zip ties around these springs really makes life a lot easier once you get to this stage. Um, the springs aren't unwinding, the zip ties are holding them in place and you can just set them aside and clean them as best as you can. So now I'll get all the small parts in these little baskets and I'll get it into the, the ultrasonic cleaner and then I'll start uh, uh, cleaning these other parts with soapy water while that's running. So it took a long time to clean everything and I'm not showing you every detail here but I'm just showing you kind of highlights of, of what I had to do. Um, you know I sent parts through the ultrasonic cleaner I'm using soapy water here and then um, I also try to scrape and and get all the the dirt and the grime and the caked on um, bits off of the parts um, you can see how dirty the water is and so that's just after five or ten minutes uh, through the ultrasonic cleaner so here I'll use uh, mineral spirits and uh, get those last bits of of grime off and uh, one thing I should have used is the right kind of gloves because those aren't it. The mineral spirits ate right through those so I had to take them off. Um, if you're planning on trying this just try to plan ahead and uh, get the right gloves. So now that everything's clean I can get things uh, back together and um, it's not as simple as it appears here um, one thing that helped was having some reference video on where things go. Um, also, it just takes um, a lot of patience and fiddling with um, all the different parts and the gears just to get everything lined up and in their correct position. Um, and as you can see, I have to sometimes take things out to put things in, and so it can get pretty time consuming. But uh, eventually, got everything back together. So getting this top plate back on is probably the most time consuming part of this process, at least for me. Um, there's a bunch of gears, each one of those have a pivot that have to go into the correct pivot hole. Um, and so getting everything lined up all at the same time is super tedious, it takes a lot of patience. And I definitely had to cut video out for this process because I couldn't show it all. Um, but eventually I got it. Uh, one thing that helped me was uh, starting in a corner and getting those um, gears um, correctly aligned and then securing that corner with a nut. You don't want to tighten it down all the way, just enough to keep the plate from popping back off. And then you'll just move through the movement um, gear by gear. And then once you get everything aligned and the plate seated correctly, you can tighten up all the nuts at the very end. So now that I have the movement all back together, I'm going to give each spring a few winds and I'm not going to wind everything all the way because at this point I'm kind of nervous about the condition of the springs. I don't know if they're going to break on me or anything like that. So I just give it a few turns just to get some power and then, um, then I can start uh, greasing the gears and, and oiling the pivots.
So I looked on eBay and was able to find a new suspension spring. It only cost me about $5 and took a few days to get here. There's a couple problems here. The hammer isn't striking and the chime works on the left aren't stopping. And so I took the movement back out and found that the, the count lever isn't stopping in each of these deep notches. So there's three things that must happen for the clock to chime correctly. The count lever needs to fall into a deep notch on the count wheel. The maintenance lever needs to land in the bottom of one of the maintenance cam notches. And the locking lever needs to fall into the path of the warning pin and stop the wheel from turning. So while I was trying to figure this all out, I also noticed there's a bent tooth on the count wheel. And so I very gently straightened that up and corrected that. But I found that the main problem was the warning pin was missing the locking lever. So I had to take the movement back apart and adjust the warning wheel by turning it 25% or so and putting the movement back together. So once I fixed that, then everything started working the way that it should. So the teeth in between the deep notches um, chimes the number of times for the hour. The second deep notch chimes on the 30 minute mark. Here I'm lifting the count lever with my finger just to test some things out. But in normal operation, the center shaft cam, which controls the minute and the second hands will lift the lifting lever which then lifts the count lever out of one of those deep notches. So now we can address this case. So it's broken in a few spots. Um, there's areas where the glue had broken loose causing things to, to shift around. So um, this not only will make the clock look better but more importantly, it will make it work better um, because a case that's, that's loose will actually steal momentum away from the pendulum swing and you could have things like uh, beat errors or it, uh, incorrectly keeping time and you could even have the pendulum stop swinging altogether. So um, it's important to get everything short up and tight and all back together the way it, it was meant to be. Here I'm just taking a chisel and removing the old glue and um, this way when I apply new glue everything fits tight back together. So when I put the case back on the base, if I don't get it exactly lined up the way it was before, these unstained areas would show through so I decided to to add a little stain and um, kind of blend things in and for the most part it's all going to be covered up here and the areas that were already sealed the stain didn't absorb into the wood anyway so I figured it wasn't going to um, cause too much of an issue. This part was pretty time consuming and I'm not showing everything I did but I'm just going through every little nook and cranny and getting all the dust and dirt um, cleaned off of the case. So now that the case is all cleaned up and solid again, we can get the movement back in, 
get it wound and see how things work. So if you remember, the movement was only held in by two screws and the other two screws must have fell out at some point. Um, but I was able to go to the hardware store and find uh, new brass screws to use and this will keep the, the movement solid against the case so the pendulum doesn't lose any momentum when it swings back and forth. Now that the, the case is all tightened back up and the movement back in, I'm just going to do another test and, and see how things are working. So there's a couple things I didn't show in this video. One is how I put the clock in beat, and the second is how I adjusted the beat rate so it doesn't tick too fast or too slow. So if you have a question on how I did those things, just shoot me a message in the comments and I'll, I'll get back with you. And there we go, a clock from 1885 brought back to life.